think I understand why the Fed pivot happened on Wednesday, why Powell went all dovish, why the dot plot showed at least three cuts and the market is pricing in six. Why is that? Frankly, the Fed is terrified. If you really go back and look at what scares the Fed the most, it's not inflation. It's not even disinflation. It is deflation. The Fed has tools to combat inflation. The Fed has tools to combat, combat disinflation. The Fed does not have tools to fight deflation. We're going to go through some math together that I found this weekend while trying to really understand what happened this week. This week, this Wednesday, the Thursday, the Friday was market moving. And I didn't really know why. We're going to do the math together. I'm going to let you check other sources so that if I am wrong, I know you guys will tell me. We will also talk about the week ahead. We will talk about Jeremy Siegel, Jeremy Grantham, and all kinds of good stuff, folks. Don't forget, if you are in the boot camp right after this at 8 a.m., we are doing day nine of our first and only 10-day boot camp. Folks, be there day nine today, at least an hour, maybe two hours. We will be doing that together. So why is the Federal Reserve terrified? We are going to do math together because I want you to understand what I uncovered and I want you to double check me, triple, triple check me. I want you to tell me if my math or my assumptions are wrong. If I'm wrong, I want to know. So please tell me. So, okay, here we go. What happened on Wednesday? Well, if you remember earlier in the week, we got a CPI reading, I think it was on Tuesday, that said CPI headline was 3.1%. Okay, great. If you dug a little deeper inside the CPI, you will know that the biggest contributor to CPI headline was shelter. Because of the asinine way that shelter is being recorded or reported or calculated or whatever you want to call it, it showed shelter up 6.5%. You and I both know that's wrong. That is not real time. In fact, the best real time information we have about rent today was just reported from Daryl Fairweather at uh, Redfin, chief economist, that rents are down right now, negative 2%. So when I looked at that, I said, you know what? Let's try to back into an accurate CPI headline reading and just see what the impact was. When I did this, I almost fell out of my chair. And we're going to do it together. I think the Fed did this or a version of this and realized they are on the cusp of deflation. Deflation bad. So let's do the math together. So the first thing we have to do is we have to correct for the 6.5% shelter addition. How do you do that? Well, you need to understand how much shelter, how much the cost of shelter is inside CPI. And it's right around 30%, okay? So what you do is you take 6.5% times 30%, and what you'll do is you will get a number of 1.95%. So 1.95% of the 3.1 is the impact of misreporting shelter, 6.5. Okay, so let's do some subtraction. So 3.1 minus 1.95 equals 1.15. The problem is that is only correcting the error to zero. We know from Redfin, and again, Daryl Fairweather, chief economist, that rent is actually correctly reported at negative 2%. So in case you don't know, negative 2 is under 0. So we have to add that as well. So again, using 30%, you get 
you get negative 0.6%. So if you take that number and you minus that number, what do you get? Well, let's do it together. So just so you can see it, we'll change colors real quick. And the actual CPI headline inflation is not 3.1, not 2.1, not even 1.1. It is basically half a percent. I believe the Fed and all of their PhDs did, did a thousand calculations correcting for the misrepresentation of shelter and they realized they are on the cusp of deflation because this reporting is going to come through eventually. Right around March, April, May, June, right in there, you are going to see shelter inflation crater. So I believe what happened this week is the Fed realized that they're breaking the economy and sending it potentially into a deflationary spiral. And if you've ever heard Fed presidents speak, Greenspan, Yellen, any of them, the thing that terrifies them is deflation. And if the Fed kept going higher and higher and higher, they would get deflation. That is the thing that I believe, that I believe occurred this week. Again, I share the math. I share the logic because I want you to tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if my math's wrong. Tell me if my assumptions are wrong. Let me know your thoughts on this. This is important. I believe this is exactly what the Fed saw and terrified them. Let me know what you think. Leave comments below. All right. A couple of very, very cool things I am doing for you. One, we are nine people, nine, away from a thousand on Best of ORAT. Remember, folks, I'm trying to get my third channel monetized. There is no secret about it. I'm being very open. I need nine more subscribers on Best of ORAT. I also need 900 more watch hours. So what I'm doing for you is I went to my course, Get Your Money Right. I downloaded a video from Jason and Jennifer Pritchard. They talk about money. They talk about the relationships. They talk about how it has evolved from being scared to being a couple that we all admire. That video is now live on Best of ORAT. It's a 45 minute video. If you are in a relationship, if you hope to be in a relationship, if you are stressed about money, there is not a better couple to watch than Jason and Jennifer Pritchard. Talk about the relationship, talk about the struggles, talk about overcoming it. They are an amazing couple. And if you are lucky enough to be coming to the event in Vegas, Jason and Jennifer Pritchard are our opening act. They are the first speakers. So if you are coming, and there are at least 300 of you coming, I suggest you watch that video so you can get all of your questions ready. Next, if you're not coming, but you are coming to the virtual event, watch the video so you are ready to rock and roll with Jason and Jennifer Pritchard. So my hope is very obvious. I hope lots of you subscribe to Best of ORAT. I hope we complete the 900 hours. There are plenty of videos there. We get the channel monetized and I won't bring it up again. Next thing I've done for you, Millennial Mike sparked the idea of doing new investor interviews. We have created a brand new playlist on the main channel, one rental at a time, that you can go watch. There are 10 new investor interviews already. You could go through, go to the playlist, watch all of them. We will be doing more and more of these. I think I have one more on Monday, one on Thursday. I don't know. We're trying to schedule more and more. I enjoy these. These are quick 20, 25 minute conversations. Reach out to me on Instagram or email me off my website if you want to be a part of the new investor series. I'm enjoying it. I hope you are as well. So let's talk about rates. I have, ha I have heard some confusion. So if you watch Resi Club, which I do every day, right? This is what Lance Lambert is putting, putting together. Go to resiclubanalytics.com. Get your free daily or at least five days a week articles. Resi Club has talked about the 30-year mortgage being 6.64% today. 
Freddie Mac just came out and said the mortgage rates are 6.95%. What's the difference? Why is there such a large gap? Well, let's just talk about reality. Freddie Mac and their 6.95 is a lagging report. They do their reporting Wednesday to Wednesday. So it is a weekly look. Resi Club Analytics gives you daily updates. So if you want to look at historical trends week by week, Freddie Mac. If you want to know what's going on today, like I do, Resi Club Analytics. Follow News Lambert on Twitter. You won't be disappointed. Uh, or X or whatever we're calling it these, these days. So that's the difference on rates and why they reported different. All right, the week ahead. This is the week we get a lot of home um, housing information. I think these numbers are going to be horrible. Because again, all of these numbers were taken at 8% mortgage rates. And you and I both know that mortgage rates are 6.6. .6. And I want to thank all of you. Many of you have reached out to me on X, on Instagram, sent me emails, all of the above, saying my housing market changed on a dime. Folks, I believe with every fiber of my body that the spring selling season started early. We have so much demand that was backed up. All of these people remember bidding wars and all of these things in the spring. We are seeing inventory that was stale for 40 days go pending with multiple offers. It's happening. And again, there are multiple markets. Your market may be different. Luxury, first time. You know the story that we talk about here. It is going to be interesting if it shows up next month that all of these numbers move because, shockingly, rates matter. So the week ahead, Monday, home builder confidence. I expect it to be horrible and actually mean nothing. The survey was done when rates were eight. They are no longer 8%. Housing starts, horrible. This was taken when rates were 8%. Are you sensing a theme? They are now 6.6. .6. Existing home sales. This will be interesting. Will we go below 3.79? I don't know. It's certainly possible. I don't know that it goes much below 3.79, but this might be the month. We had existing home sales when rates were 8%. It'll be very interesting. Of all the numbers I am looking forward to, it is Wednesday, existing home sales. On Thursday, we will get U.S. leading economic indicators. On Friday, we get PCE. PCE, personal consumption expenditures, PCE core being the one that the Fed looks at the most. It is going to be very, very interesting. Alrighty, oh, and also on Friday we get new home sales. New home sales also on Friday. Alrighty, folks, let's talk about Jeremy Siegel and Jeremy Grantham. Who are they? Doesn't really matter. One's a bull, one's a bear. Again, I like reading both sides. Jeremy Siegel first. Jeremy Siegel says, in 2024, interest rates to drop. Thank you, Jeremy. I think most people would agree with you. He expects because interest rates to drop, stocks will rise. Home prices will go up 4 to 5%. There will be no recession. Value stocks will outperform the Magnificent Seven. Basically, the economy will broaden or the market will broaden. And the Fed will cut five or six times. Folks, if I'm right, and the Fed is afraid of deflation, it could happen. It could happen. How about Jeremy Grantham? He is Mr. Bubble Boy. He has been saying the super bubble of all bubbles is going to pop. Uh, he says a looming recession and potentially something worse is coming, such as another Great Depression. Folks, the things that I think we should be looking at, we get a weekly number every Thursday. And I don't know who's right, Jeremy Grantham or Jeremy Siegel, and I don't know that it matters. But how can you and I see who is looking more right or less right? Well, the good news is you and I get a number every Thursday morning that will be an early indicator. It is weekly jobless claims. Weekly jobless claims is our indicator to see if things are going from bad to worse. That's what I'm going to be looking at every Thursday to see who might be right. Jeremy Grantham, the bear, super bear, perma bear, whatever, or Jeremy Siegel, 
the bull of all bulls. I will be watching weekly unemployment rate. A couple other things that happened on Friday. Darden beats and raised guidance. Darden is a, I don't know, mid-market restauranteer. Uh, again, they beat and raised guidance, which I thought was interesting. Lennar, one of the largest home builders, beat top line, beat bottom line, uh, and is expecting growth next year. Lots and lots of stuff going on, folks. I hope you have an amazing day. If you are a part of the boot camp, I will see you in about 15 minutes, day nine. Don't forget to do me a favor. Go to Best of ORAT. Let's get us over 1,000 subs, and let's start watching some videos so we can get that last 900 hours. And, of course, let's keep the new investor playlist going. If you want to be interviewed, share your story in 20 to 25 minutes. Ping me on Instagram or send me an email off my website. And lastly, do me a favor. Go to my Instagram page, One Rental at a Time. I posted a um, picture of all the speakers at our February event. I want you to go there and tag every speaker that you know. Write in the comments. Tag the speakers. Right, Many of them have Instagram pages. Let's blow up that, um, I don't know, post and see how many times we can tag. There's like 20 people, 25 people in the image. How many do you know? How many do you follow? Let's see what happens. Take care, everyone. Bye.